We've seen it time and again. Entrepreneurs build a business driven by an existing passion for a product or service. They then leverage that knowledge of an industry's pain points to find new and exciting ways to innovate within it. But we've also heard stories of the exact opposite. The entrepreneurs with absolutely no industry experience that fight tooth and nail to break into a market they know nothing about. The co-founders of Black and Bold fall into that latter camp, building an online coffee company with zero knowledge of coffee roasting, no experience making a D2C website, and a nearly non-existent interest in specialty coffee. They dove into their industry blind, but they saw a market gap ripe with opportunity, an opportunity that could not only drive business value, but create meaningful social impact. We knew we wanted to do good. We didn't want to just build a business to line our pockets and go sit on a beach drinking drinks with umbrellas in it. We want to do something else. We want to make sure that we can have profound impact. We just didn't know profound would manifest into working with Ben and Jerry's and Congresswoman Corey Bush. That was definitely not on my vision board. I just want to continue to avail myself to be a servant, making black and bold a servant to those opportunities. That's Rod Johnson, co-founder of Black and Bold. Before founding the company, he admits to preferring tea over coffee. But when his friend and now co-founder came to him with an idea for a new kind of coffee company, Rod knew it was a vision he couldn't ignore. So how did Rod and his co-founder break into the $102 billion U.S. coffee market with no knowledge of the industry? How did they make Black and Bold stand out among competitors? And how have they turned their own experiences growing up into a social good mission that's impacting the nation? Find out on this episode of The Journey. There are always exciting things happening in the world of small business. The news that grabs the headlines, though, are always the highlights. The overnight successes, the billion-dollar IPOs, the massive exits... But just like your Instagram feed, that's never the whole story. Let's look deeper than the headlines and press photos. Underneath all of that is the real work of building something valuable and lasting. Don't get me wrong, I love crazy success stories and can be drawn in by those big flashy tales just as much as the next person. But we all know that what's more important than the destination is how you get there. It's the struggles you have to overcome and the insights you learn along the way that make you who you are. So those are the stories we're telling. It's raw, it's honest, and maybe it's exactly what you need to hear. I'm Hillary Georgie, and this is The Journey. So, anyone who owns a small business knows what the difference between surviving and thriving feels like. And obviously we all aim to thrive. That's why we're excited about our latest partnership with UPS. Our listeners know that whether you're moving your business online or getting into new markets or just trying to make things run faster and more efficiently, small businesses are up against a unique set of challenges. That's why UPS designed innovative tools just for small businesses that are made to help take you to the next level. Learn more about how UPS can get your small business moving forward at ups.com slash pivot. Rod grew up in Gary, Indiana, a formerly booming steel town. Gary had faced steady economic hardships after the steel industry crumbled in the 60s and 70s. Rod was born after that bust, but he found that while even though some families struggled financially, the community had still become tightly bonded together. His neighbors loved and cared for each other. The town was full of people that were thoughtful, scrappy, and hardworking values that stuck with him. But despite the backdrop of economic turmoil, young Rod dreamed big. He dreamed about big words, that is. I remember vividly wanting to be a meteorologist. Why? It's because I knew how to spell the word. And that was it. Like My mom was big on spelling bees and me participating. And that was one of the words that I felt really accomplished by conquering. And it was like, all right, well, let's find out what a meteorologist is. And she's like, it's a weather person. You can tell people the weather. That's what I was looking forward to. Obviously, the wind has blown in a different direction. Needless to say, we aren't speaking to Rod today because he became a meteorologist. 
Instead, he invested in a different passion after college. He pursued a career in fundraising. I spent the last decade or so working as a professional fundraiser for academic and healthcare institutions. And that started from just a summer job in college. The telefund that we called at that time, they were hiring. And I was like, hey, you can make X amount of dollars per hour just talking to fellow graduates. And that ultimately blossomed into a career for me over the next 10 years upon graduating. It certainly teaches you resiliency and persistence. You get told no a lot when you are asking for donations in any capacity, whether it's 20 bucks or $20,000. So similar to our journey in creating Black and Bold, we had a few no's, we had a few doors closed. I gleaned from previous experiences to overcome those no's and turn them into something a little more positive. Turning roadblocks into something a little more positive became a hallmark of Rod's professional career. So how did he take that mentality and go from a long career in fundraising to building a coffee company? It all started with a phone call from his old friend, Pernell Caesar. We met back in high school. My family moved to the street where Pernell had already lived. There weren't a lot of kids or teenage boys in particular that lived on that block, and we just naturally gravitated towards each other primarily because he had a basketball court in his backyard. We had some backyard battles and just really built this friendship that has lasted over the last 20 years. Our friendship led us to starting Black and Bold in a very organic fashion. Pernell gave me a call one day and asked, hey man, do you drink coffee? Uh, Not really. I'm more of a tea guy. Well, I have this idea that I want to share with you. We were just ideating trying to figure out how could we make this a unique experience. And we landed on making sure that it was predicated on some social component. We knew that we wanted to give back, that we would take a consumer first approach. We didn't want to put forth any products that we ourselves wouldn't enjoy. We would be authentic and have fun and it would be inviting and welcoming. There are certain industries, I'll pick on wine, for example, where it has this exclusionary type of assets to it, whereas if you're not an enthusiast, if you don't speak the language, if you don't swirl your glass counterclockwise way, then you might feel not a part of it. We didn't want to have any remnants of that in the business that we built. Very organically, we decided that we wanted to branch from our corporate careers. So naturally, Rod, a non-coffee drinker with no knowledge of the coffee industry, made the leap from his familiar corporate job into a coffee business with Purnell. Saying yes was the easy part. Learning how to source and roast coffee beans is a whole different story. I worked in the nonprofit space and Purnell worked on the for-profit side in retail merchandising and brand business development. I harp on that because it didn't include anything surrounding coffee. We just spent a lot of time in coffee shops. We were traveling for our respective careers and just kind of fell in love with coffee culture, but that doesn't necessarily give you education around roasting or sourcing coffee or anything that comes along with being a coffee brand. We just became mentees, the experts that were in the field by way of YouTube videos. Pernell actually purchased a small tabletop roaster, refixed his garage to become our first roastery. We burned a lot of beans, (laughs) A, a ton of beans. So much so that Pernell's neighbors called the fire department because they thought his house was on fire. The smoke was so prominent that they thought his house was going to burn down. It took a lot of trial and error, thousands of beans worth, to get their footing and go from burnt beans to something even close to drinkable. And it took another thousand to go from drinkable to delicious. But eventually they landed on a blend that resonated with people their signature blend called Rise and Grind, which they still offer today. And while it may seem that Rod and Purnell weren't at all prepared for what they were getting themselves into, there were complementary skills that both had to offer that not only allowed them to break into the industry, but see market opportunities traditional coffee companies may have missed. That learning curve was steep. We were patient because we felt that our POV would help differentiate us once we got this thing off the ground. So when and how would that knowledge start to set them apart from competitors? And what inflection point transitioned Rod and Purnell from roasting beans in their garage 
to having their blend hit the shelves of Target's nationwide. Find out after the break. Today's podcast is sponsored by UPS. Look, if there's one thing that all small business owners know, it's that keeping customers waiting just doesn't work. So UPS has unveiled their fastest ground shipping ever, getting you to customers in cities across the U.S. up to a day faster. And now Mission Podcast listeners can save on UPS's fastest ground shipping ever with the code SOAR, S-O-A-R. Small businesses around the country trust UPS to get their orders out the door and delivered every day. Your customers don't have time to wait and you don't have time to waste. So head to ups.com slash pivot and use the code SOAR, S-O-A-R, to start shipping and saving with UPS's fastest ground ever today. Rod and Purnell had found a roast that resonated. They began to perfect that recipe while developing others from a variety of differently sourced beans. They got their beans from non-traditional sources, including Rwanda, Ethiopia, and Honduras. They were striving to bring in unique flavors from around the world. And while their blends were finally coming together and their neighbors could stop calling the fire department, they began to visualize how they could use a unique mission to not only stand out, but give back to their communities. I mentioned that we knew we wanted to have some give back component associated with our business. We ultimately landed on contributing a percentage of our proceeds to impacting a very vulnerable demographic, and that's youth in need. So I mentioned Purnell and I grew up together, and it certainly wasn't without our own set of obstacles, primarily due to the area in which we grew up in, understanding that There's a lot of potential in people who live in those circumstances. They just ultimately need some added assistance, some help. We decided that we will pour into organizations that are keenly focused on supporting our youth across America. Coffee brewed and mission in mind. It was time to start developing a platform to monetize their products, a process that required Rod to start learning another new skill set. He taught himself how to code and build their e-commerce site from the ground up. We support nonprofits, but we ourselves are for profit. So we definitely want to figure out a way to turn this hobby into a business. And we split and delineated our responsibilities. Purnell was focused primarily on the operations and being the mad scientist and creating our blends and, and sourcing our coffee. Whereas I took the behind the scenes approach and really developed our e-com experience. So I became a student of the game of all things Shopify. Just really started to learn about coding and web design and trying to create this digital experience because we knew that we didn't want to have a brick and mortar. We felt as though if we could have a digital store that will allow more people to participate in this social impact mission, our business would eventually scale. That means that we're able to continue to support those causes as we continue to grow. So that was the thought process and our initial go-to-market strategy. But even with a beautiful site to engage with and funnel buyers through, there was still the issue of production. Remember, at this point, they were still working out of Purnell's house. How are you setting up that back end to actually literally deliver things to customers? Sure. So just in Purnell's basement. <laughs> <laughs> You're just packing up boxes, giving it to UPS to be like, go ahead. <laughs> It was exactly that. We were roasted in his garage and then we would package him in his basement. We eventually outgrew that space and fortunate enough to be offered the opportunity to share production space with a local brewery. And we did some collaborations with them. They had a cool coffee stout. That was cool, you know, just being able to see a much larger facility and one that was much different from ours. And it got the gears turning on ways that we could now insert our brand into other industries, other markets, into other demographics. So we were there, we were sharing about maybe a thousand square feet of co-work space and still a very manual process. By this time, we had upgraded our roaster from the tabletop one that we had to one that was a bit more industrial, but still very much so a manual fulfillment process. And as our company continued to grow, as we got a lot more attention, we eventually had to outsource at least that piece of our business so that we could focus on curating a better tasting experience. Building off what they had learned at the brewery, 
they realized that there was a massive opportunity to be had in partnering with existing distributors across different industries. Much like they had each come into the coffee industry with unique backgrounds, they knew that their coffee could break into other unique industries. And it's with that in mind that Black and Bold found their way to the shelves of Target and the freezers of Ben and Jerry's. I would say probably the biggest win up until most recently was being awarded national distribution via Target stores. Now, regardless of where you are, you're able to access specialty coffee. That was part of the ethos and us you know, building the business is that we wanted anyone to be able to have an upgrade to their daily ritual, so to speak, despite the proximity that they had to a specialty coffee shop. That was very much so satisfying and definitely fueling to the moment that we were in collaboration with Ben & Jerry's, another B Corp that's focused on social justice and the best ways possible to bring to market a new flavor. But how exactly was Black & Bold able to garner the attention of these notable brands? What was catching the eye of consumers and retailers alike? I would attribute much of that to our business model and the heightened focus on conscious consumerism. People are looking to essentially vote with their dollar and they want to do business with organizations that stand more for something other than selling a widget, selling a service. How are you actually reciprocating the love back to those who have invested in you? And so the fact that our business has been that from its inception, it then allows for other organizations to find us. The Ben and & Jerry's and the NBA partnerships, I would say, definitely embody that. Those larger enterprises are looking to continue to double down on how progressive and focused on social justice as they are and their support of small businesses. So ultimately, those marriages have come to fruition. It wasn't just that their mission resonated. Rod and Purnell were also able to draw on those business experiences from their past lives in the corporate world. When it comes to retail distribution, I got to give some shouts and props to my business partner because that was his career, getting an opportunity to peek behind the curtain and see how that process ultimately transpires and taking a product and bringing it to market by way of retail distribution. So that helped us ask the right questions that helped us to create and make tweaks to our business so that when the opportunity presented itself, that we will be ready for it. And ready for opportunities they have been. Through the ups and downs, the burnt beans and winning partnerships, Rod attests their success to two key traits, natural curiosity and learning to be comfortable with fear. Throughout this whole story is like these instances where you were really just like going in blind. I don't know anything about coffee. I don't even like coffee. Let's start roasting some coffee. I don't know anything about importing beans. Let's just import some beans. I don't know anything about e-commerce. Let's learn about e-commerce. What is it mentally that drives you to be able to do these things? What drives or what motivates that? It's just a natural curiosity. You know, why not? We recognize that there was a void in the market and why not us? Why shouldn't we throw our name in the hat and see what ultimately stems from it? So the initial interest was just because we're naturally wired to ask questions and try to get the answers to those questions. There definitely have been moments and still to this day, we're scared and nervous. We've gone into many of our endeavors blindly. It inherently means that there is some fear attached to it. You don't know if it's going to work. Imposter syndrome is real. You definitely have that little nagging voice that tells you you shouldn't be doing this or you're not good enough. Having a goal and being persistent about pursuing that goal, I think, is what I would attribute to our ascension, so to speak. Today, Black & Bold occupies a 20,000 square foot commercial facility with additionally outsourced roasters to help them meet extra demand. According to Rod, they can now roast about a million pounds of coffee per year. But of course, it was never just about the coffee for them. It was also always about the impact. Today, Black & Bold contributes 5% of its profits to organizations that provide after-school activities, coding camps, urban farming, mentorship, and other programs to support children and teenagers in need across the U.S. Rod and Purnell walked into the coffee business with nothing more than a vision. By leaning into their unique backgrounds and embracing a mindset of persistence and curiosity, 
they were able to brew their own success, not just for themselves, but for their communities as well. And that's a blend that tastes good no matter who you are. The Journey is created by Mission.org and sponsored by UPS. To learn more about the show or mission, visit Mission.org. And to learn more about how UPS can help your business, visit ups.com slash pivot.